Should you get the Sonos Beam second generation? Let's dive into it on a next Mix Attack. Hi guys, welcome to Mixed Tech, where I review technology for the consumer prosumer and I give my take on the things I see. I've really enjoyed Sonos the last few years and the Sonos Beam first generation was my first purchase into the Sonos ecosystem. While this is small and compact, it does impressive in a medium to small size room with the capabilities that it has between the speakers that are included. I've since upgraded this beam in my living room to the Sonos Arc because of Dolby Atmos. And this has been in my office for the last couple of years since that upgrade. Now that the second generation Sonos Beam is offering Dolby Atmos, I am gonna be replacing that in my office so that I can have Dolby Atmos in my office and replace the first generation that sounds good but doesn't have Dolby Atmos. So let's talk to the features and what differentiates the first generation versus the second generation. All right, to start off with the design, you're getting the same speaker. It's the same size, same speakers included. Really the only difference from the outside is going to be the grill, which in the second generation is using a polycarbonate grill versus the mesh that's in the first generation. So what's really changing on this versus the first and second generation outside of Dolby Atmos is the processing capabilities. You have a 40% faster CPU. You also have eARC, which is an update, which not all TVs are capable of doing. So check with your manufacturer. Generally, any TV that was built after 2018 should have it. Now, if you don't have eARC, there are options for you. And I actually had to address this with my Sonos Arc. I'll include the link in the description below on the device that I use that actually was able to enable me to be able to leverage my eARC capabilities from my Apple TV 4K directly to my Arc. And you can do the exact same thing if you want to on the Sonos Beam second generation. The speakers on this are small and compact, but it puts out some sound with five Class D amplifiers, one center tweeter, four elliptical midwoofers, and three passive radiators. This has decent bass with the midwoofers and the radiators, but if you really wanna have more bass, you should go with the Sonos Sub, which you can add to your surround sound setup. So since these speakers haven't changed since the first generation, these do not have up firing speakers like you get in the Arc and what you would traditionally get in a Dolby Atmos setup. It's actually using virtual surround sound, which emulates the sound to feel like it's coming above you. This speaker, like other Sonos speakers, fits really well into the Apple ecosystem. And if you have an Apple TV 4K, you can use your Apple Music subscription and be able to stream music through Dolby Atmos. You can also use your Apple TV 4K to use any of your video streaming services that support Dolby Atmos. And you can see that in the Sonos app by going in and verifying that it's running 5.1 or in this case, Dolby Atmos. To set this up, it's super simple. And with NFC now included in the second generation, you should be able to put your phone up to it. For whatever reason, I've always had challenges with it with NFC. So I've gone to the second option, which allows you to pair it with the tone, which has worked successfully for me in a lot of situations between my roams and between my Sonos Move. After getting this set up and added to your account, you can set up other speakers. And in my situation, my office, I have two Sonos Ones that allow me to have rear speakers. And I'll say, if you're trying to add to this capability on the Sonos Beam second generation, it's probably better to start with having rear speakers and then upgrading to a sub if that's what you want for more bass, because it really adds some good depth of sound based upon having rear speakers and really puts you into a situation where you can have 5.1 and true Dolby Atmos. Now, once it's set up, you do wanna use TruePlay to be able to tune it within the room. And I tried this with my iPhone 13 Pro Max, and right now it looks like Sonos app doesn't support that phone. So I was able to use my iPhone 12 Pro Max before I had to send it back. So keep that in mind, hopefully that's gonna be updated and Sonos will have that update so you don't have to worry about it on your iPhone 13 Pro Max. But in my situation, I wasn't able to use TruePlay and keep that in mind, it's just for iOS devices right now. And it seems like probably for any iPhone 12 and earlier. Like in the first generation, you can add your assistant to this device. Right now you can only add Google and Amazon's assistants. Hopefully Siri will be available through integration as Apple is opening up the integration to more third parties. Whether that's gonna happen with Sonos, that's to be seen. Now with the second generation Sonos Beam and any other recent Sonos speaker, you can use AirPlay 2 to connect to it and multiple rooms, however you set it up. Keep in mind, if you use that as a connection, you're not gonna be able to get Dolby Atmos because of the limitations of AirPlay 2. So if you truly want Dolby Atmos, make sure to use an Apple TV 4K and that should get you what you need if you're in the Apple ecosystem. 
Now, how does it sound? Well, in my 12 by 12 office, which I had the first generation Sonos Beam and now have the second generation Beam, I will say that there isn't a significant difference. It does sound better with vocal quality. And I will say that I have a much better depth of field on the sound stage based upon the speaker emulation that it appears that Sonos is doing with the better processing capabilities and leveraging ER. And I think if you're going to get this, you do want to get this with additional rear speakers to get the full experience of Atmos. And if you can get the Sonos Sub, but I would suggest upgrading the rear speakers before upgrading to a Sonos Sub. With the Sonos Beam second generation alone, it sounds really good for just TV listening, but if you're looking for that movie and music experience, it's gonna be great to add rear speakers. So who is this for? If you're in an apartment or you're looking at this as a small to medium sized room and you're looking for a soundbar for Sonos, the second generation is a great purchase because it's only $50 more than the first generation at the current time. So you'll be able to get eARC, you'll be able to get faster processing capabilities by the new processor, and you'll get Dolby Atmos. If you have the first generation Sonos Beam, I don't think it's necessary to upgrade to the second generation unless you're looking for Dolby Atmos. And if you're looking for Dolby Atmos, I recommend getting the better Sonos Arc and going with that. Well, I hope you like this video. And if you have, make sure to hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to this channel for more great content like this. Thanks for joining Mix of Tech.